to just speak and introduce some of the uh, ideas we have from industrial ecology. Great. Greetings from Cambridge uh, and from Julian Allwood, who many of you have know, know who have met. He says hello as well. He couldn't be here today. Um, I'm going to take a look at this idea of the systems perspective on the circular economy. What sits around the circular economy? What things need to happen if we're to transition from kind of a linear world to a circular world? So circular economy um, is a very simple, elegant solution. We take what we currently have, a linear model, a, a, a take, make, make, dispose model for our industry, and we shift it across to this circular model where resources go round and round, companies can sell the materials over and over again, make more money, uh, we eliminate waste, um, and we decouple this idea of, of making money from using resources. Uh, very simple to draw as pictures. You'll see many, many of these types of circular pictures, um, but much more complicated in practice. Um, here's a, some work we've been doing on the steel industry. I'm not going to go into the full details, but we're trying to draw a map of what uh, the current circular circularity for global steel looks like. Um, both today and what we think we might be able to get to in the future as a technical limit. And I'd just like to point out, so some things you'll notice, firstly in orange, we have energy. Um, the circular economy likes to think we'd, we would get to renewable energy. At the moment, our energy isn't renewable. So we have energy inputs to the material systems, to the industrial systems. In the blue, we've got some recycling loops that are already happen happening. St steel is very good at recycling. Uh, metals in general are, are good for recycling. Um, and in purple, we've got this this big chunk of materials going into what we'd call in-use stocks. Um, and Daniel Muller here is, is an expert on this whole idea. A lot of what we're, we're making, a lot of the products, a lot of materials, uh, go into making new products, not to maintaining old ones. And so while we're making new products, while we're growing the amount of products that are currently in use, uh, it's very hard to be circular because to grow the stock of material, you need uh, more material coming into that circle. bit about industrial ecology. Um, so the circular economy isn't a new idea. Um, uh, it's been popularized very much in the, in the recent kind of five years, but there's about 50 years history of academia looking at ideas um, starting right back with the closed loops kind of uh, ideas with Boulding back in 1966. Um, I've stolen this picture from NTNU and it's just a nice way of saying that industrial ecology is doing a lot of this work um, around these ideas of circularity um, and has a lot of tools that perhaps could be useful to help understand how to go towards circularity. Um, in our work, we look at materials. Um, circularity revolves a lot around, um, at least in the dialogue at the moment, around products, around manufacturing, around eliminating waste in manufacturing, about designing products for future reuse or future recycling. Um, but we think it's important also to look at materials. Materials um, are in every part of these loops. They, they go through the linear supply chain now and they will go through the circular supply chain. Um, and if we look at materials, um, and this is just one indicator of the impact of materials, um, carbon emissions, about a third of our carbon emissions globally come from industry and 70% of um, those industrial emissions come from just kind of six sectors. So there's some big sectors in there, steel, cement, uh, chemicals and petrochemicals, which if we are to change society towards circular, we're going to need to think about addressing. They're not maybe as exciting as some of the clever materials that go on in electronics and, and, and all the work that Karen's talking about, which is great, um, but from a carbon point of view, we still have to address these big, mainly construction type materials. So why is it so difficult to go from this linear model across to a circular model? Um, again, I'm going to just use the example of steel with some of our work. This is 
a very simplistic kind of picture of today. Um, 1,500 million tonnes of steel roughly a year we're making. That, that figure goes up and down a bit. Going through different stages of making that. Mining, steel making, fabrication, assembly and use. But it's not that simple. It's much more com complicated as we've seen. Because of these issues of energy, because of these issues of different types of recycling or reuse, because of these issues of, of stocks in use. And so I want to I wanna take a, a slightly more detailed look at four issues we see as making it difficult or to get to circularity and therefore challenges that need to, to be addressed. Um, they're going to be this idea of in stocks that keep growing, uh, materials being downcycled, Different types of recycling have, have different quality. Energy not being renewable. Um, and then I want to look at even steel reuse is quite, quite difficult. So four ideas. The first is about this idea of in stocks, uh, uh, materials in stock or in use growing. Um, we see here just a graph of global demand for five different materials. Um, over the last 50 years, growing four to six fold for those materials, so very fast. Um, and we expect that to keep going. We expect demand for materials to at least double by 2050. So reaching any type of absolute emissions reduction target against a doubling in material becomes very difficult. You need per tonne of material reductions of 75% um, emissions or more. The problem is the reason why we have all this new this, these materials being produced by the industry is to make new products mainly. So a lot of new products coming on board, a lot of new uh, uh, materials and products going on board, particularly in Asia over the last 10 years, um, to grow stocks so everyone has cars and buildings and products that they need. And growth is an important part of the circular economy package, but growing material stocks means we can't go circular. Um, it, the example is in steel. Today we don't have enough scrap steel to supply our demand for steel because the steel that's coming out of use was all made 30 years ago and 30 years ago we only made a third of the steel we, we're demanding today. So because we're growing we haven't got enough scrap. Materials are downcycled. Um, I've just listed some examples here. Uh, in most cases, when we are recycling, we take uh, a mix of scrap material and put it into the lowest quality uh, demand or product that we can. So in steel, we take most of our steel scrap and it goes into buildings. Uh, in, in aluminium, we, we downcycle um, a lot where we take good quality wrought aluminium and we put it into cast aluminium and engine blocks. Um, wood fibres um, for paper, we, we, we cascade down from high quality paper down to cardboard, about seven reuses. Um, mixed polymers, again very difficult to take polymers and make them into new high quality poly polymers. Concrete, recycling of concrete which in my view doesn't make any sense at all uses more cement to bind together the crushed concrete than what you use to make new concrete. So we end up using more energy, more carbon to make recycled concrete from concrete. Glass bottles ending up in roads for fillers. So lots of examples of downcycling. And what we need actually is metrics to measure that. We need to understand when recycling is good or when it's not as good, how much energy is required to do that recycling and to be able to trade off between reuse and recycling and different options for different circular loops. Circular economy is predicated on having renewable energy and we don't have renewable energy so it's, it's, we need to still consider today's energy sources that we use a lot of carbon in those. Um, and so we need to understand the implications of going circular in terms of energy. Many times we see examples of trying to make certain products go around circular that use actually more energy than the original product. So we need to balance these things together. Um, and in policy we have you know, very different policy streams of climate change, 
energy efficiency and circular economy and sometimes they're not pulling together in the same direction. Sometimes uh, going circular means we end up with more emissions or less efficient processes. So we need to understand all three together in a system. And finally, this is just from a project we're doing on um, reusing steel beams. So we, we talk a lot about reusing, um, uh, you know, we're trying to make circular electronic products, which are very complex, which change very quickly, have consumer preferences. Beams, steel beams is a great example of a product that doesn't change, lasts long, isn't damaged in use, is not seen by the consumer, so has no consumer preference, and yet we can't even reuse beams at the moment in our society. So why is that? Well, at the moment at the top, what we do is a little bit of small scale reuse. That's when you get maybe the buyer and the seller is the same person, informal reuse at a small scale. Where we would like to be is down here at the bottom with a full, fully reconfigured supply chain where the stock is for steel, stock reuse steel, and new steel, you can choose which one you want. But we can't jump from here to here because it's a significant transformation of the supply chain to move from uh, what we're currently doing to a fully reused market. So we're proposing in the middle to have a, a web portal where the suppliers of reused steel, if I'm, if I'm taking down a building, and the designers who are demanding it can interchange information to try and bridge the supply chain through. So there's still much to do. Um, and, and what I want to stress is that in, in the industrial ecology world, we don't have all the answers. It's not an easy area, but we are putting a lot of work into understanding the mapping um, of materials, of energy, um, how to combine and trade off between these different systems, how to make sense of what we should do. And, and the reason is, I think, is, um, and we would, you know, we're trying to engage more in the circular economy dialogue is because we want to make sense the things that are, we want to make sure that the things that are proposed actually make sense. We want to make sure they make sense from an economical point of view and from an environmental point of view and that they're technically possible. And so we need good tools, we need good metrics to be able to understand that well. Um, just finally to say, lots of these ideas, at least in, in our work, um, Julian Orwood and myself, have written up in, in our book, Sustainable Materials, with both eyes open. Um, uh, Bill Gates just listed it in, in his top six reads of last year, which is um, great for our sales in the US. Um, although Bill Gates isn't particularly popular in Europe because he doesn't pay much tax. Um, this book looks at this idea of material efficiency. Um, carbon and energy is embedded into materials and we don't use our materials very well. We are quite wasteful with them. How can we do that better? Closing resource loops is part of that dialogue. Um, it's downloadable for free as well from um, the internet. So thank you.